this movie, we're going to take a look at mirroring and laying out UVs. We're picking up where we left off with our crow when we laid out half of the UVs for the model. We've got the wing, the body, the head, uh, half of the tail, and the full leg. With all of those done, we're going to mirror that work across to the other side of the model. There's no real reason that we have to lay out all of the UVs again for that other half. So to begin, I'm going to select my model and just check in the channel box here. I've got all of my history still there, so I'm just going to get rid of that. Delete by type, history, just to give me a nice clean model. And I do want to point out too that our model is located in the center of the world and is perfectly symmetrical. By doing that, that's going to make our mirror tool work a lot better. We can uh, still get it to work without that, but having those things perfectly aligned just makes everything easier. So I'll choose Mesh and go down to Mirror Cut. Let's open those tool options and take a look. And what this is going to do is it really doesn't have anything to do with the UVs as we don't have a tool to specifically mirror those. What we're using here is the Mirror Cut tool, which will mirror the geometry as well as the UVs from one side to the other. Now at the same time, it'll merge the geometry back together, which is what our merge with original option does. So doing this, we should end up with the same exact model that we had, except we'll have an additional set of UVs in our UV texture editor. So I want to look at cut along in my mirror cut options there, and this is going to give me the cutting plane. If I look at my world axis, my cutting plane is going to be the YZ. We want to slice this model right down here, taking this side and placing it over to the other side. So we'll choose the YZ plane. I'll keep merge with original on, and we'll choose mirror cut. That cuts the model, mirrors it over. It also gives me a separate manipulator. Now we could take this manipulator and do different things with it, but for the most part, moving around, that's not going to do anything on this particular model. It has some great uses that we'll explore later, but for this guy, we'll just leave there. And let's take a look in the UV texture editor. I'll zoom out, or just hit A to frame all. And there we can see that my UVs are there. It doesn't look like they've been mirrored, but we can tell that they have been because with the shaded mode on, I can see that I get that purple color. Whereas before, all I had was blue, indicating that the faces were clean or the UVs were clean and that there was nothing under them. Now we're getting a second set, which is red underneath our blue. So again, again, we're getting that mixture of color there that tells us, hey, we've got UVs stacked on top of other UVs. I'm going to go back uh, before I start modifying any of those UVs. I'm going to delete my history. That will get rid of that mirror tool. And I'll also grab that cut manipulator and we'll delete that too. We don't need that. And let's go into our UV texture editor. And I want to select all of those UVs that we just created and flip them and then slide them out to the other side. Let's switch to our dual window here so that we can see our model in the perspective. And I will choose UV and select just a portion of the UVs for one side of the model. And we'll do select, select shell, which will just complete it. I'll hit W and slide those out. I'll also flip those over so that we have our UVs going in the right direction. We'll switch to UV and deselect. And it looks like I still have just a few that are overlapping. Probably didn't make my selection very good. And we'll do select shell. There we go. And let's pull that one off and flip it. And it looks like we've got one more. I'll select single UV, select shell, pull it off, and flip that. Uh, everything else is looking pretty good. Now we can go back through our UV shells and move and sew these pieces together. And we're only going to move and sew pieces that need to go together. For instance, the tail, it wraps all the way around. 
it's basically a, a cylindrical shape. So we could go ahead and move those pieces together. We can bring the body together and probably even the head together a little bit. Let's start with the tail. I'm going to go to Edge and look for that common edge between the two models. And let's see which one. So this is on top. I'd rather have the top sewn together as opposed to bottom edge. This will place any seam that we might have down at the bottom, which would be a lot better. We'll sew the top section, and I'll grab all of those edges there and deselect any of those extras and do move and sew. It shouldn't need it, but we'll go ahead and select the entire shell and just do a little bit of an unfold, and yeah, it didn't do anything to it, so that's good. And let's move on to the body. Got to find those pieces. So let's select, I'll just select a UV there. And there are little small things down here in the frame. And we're going to toggle back and forth here so I can see. So there's the back of the bird, and there's the seam line. Let's put those two pieces together. Move and sew. And that should be the front. Oh, there we go. So it's the front attached to the wing. We need this line right there. And let's find there its corresponding edge is all the way over there. Let's move and sew. Frame this up and then let's try unfolding this. This will probably unfold a little bit since it's a rounded, or a rounded part of the body. Nice. And let's do, let's do the back too while we're here. Just a little bit. Perfect. Next is the head. Let's find that and sew those pieces together. Now the head, because of the shape of the head, we really can't put too much of this together. And we'll just grab a little bit. I'll just grab a single edge there. If we were to go up higher, it would start to pull these faces together, which will eventually cause distortion on our texture. So we'll keep this simple and just grab that last edge right there. Now notice also I have this extra edge just because I was being sloppy there and I got an extra edge in there. It doesn't matter. We can leave it. We don't have to go back and meticulously deselect all of these edges when we're doing move and sew. When we're doing the cut, we definitely do. Otherwise, the edge will get cut. But for mirror and sew, we can leave it because this does not have a corresponding edge. And you can see over here, this edge is not highlighted. So it's only going to mirror and sew corresponding edges. Okay? And these are going to be open edges or you know previously cut edges. So let's do move and sew. And it's just going to shift that over there. And that's perfect. Let's frame it all again. We're looking pretty good. I don't think any of these other pieces can go back together. We've got the leg, the foot, and the toes. All of those are looking pretty good as is. Now what we can do is lay out the UVs. Now I've used this term before when we're just in the projecting that we're saying, hey, you know, we're going to lay out the UVs. But this tool is specifically called Layout UVs. And what it's going to do is grab everything that I have and rescale it. And it will rescale each of these individually so that they're all back into proportion based upon the existing model. And it will then place them within the zero to one texture space. Let's go to the tool. I'm going to choose polygons. And we have layout right here. And I'll open up the tool options. And the first option there that I'm looking at is single or multiple objects. We have that. And in parentheses, we have non-overlapping. This is kind of Maya's way of giving you a little hint into the tool. It's saying, hey, this is only good if you've got non-overlapping UVs. None of my UVs are overlapping, so this is going to work great for us. If we did have some overlapping UVs, perhaps we have a lot more UVs out there, lots of little small pieces, then we could choose per object where it does say overlapping, and the layout tool will sort through those and actually pull them apart for you. But we don't have any overlapping. Our next is pre-scale. We want to make sure that this is set to object. And that means that it will go back to our object, use the object's space to scale these UVs up. Flip reverse. We don't have to worry about this. We've already done that. All of our UVs are forward-facing. They're all blue. 
if they were red, they would be flipped. Then this flipped reverse here would flip them back. Next, the shell layout. We're going to do a layout into region. That region is the 0 to 1 texture space. So that's going to be that little box that's way down here. Scale mode, uniform. We want all of our UV shells to be uniformly scaled so that that way they're not going to lose their proportions. And the shell stacking is going to use the shape of the UV shell in order to place them into that 0 to 1 texture space. And below that, we have rotate, which is set to none. That's not going to move any of our shells. We'll set that to 90 degrees. And when we set it to 90 degrees, then Maya is going to look to see if any of these pieces could be rotated in order to fit better into the UV texture space. So let's just see what that's going to do for us. Down below, we have our spacing presets. By default, this is set to 512 and we have a percentage of space of 0.2. What this controls is the spacing between each of our UV shells. I'm gonna leave it at 0.2 and we'll hit apply. And we didn't get anything there because we've got to get out of component mode. We'll just switch back to object mode. Let's hit apply. And then let's go back and take a look. And now you can see that it did, it took all of my UVs, placed them within the UV texture space, the zero to one texture space, and it also scaled them all, which is what is so important. Now everything has the same proportion. My legs are no longer 10 times larger than my wings. Everything looking good there. But look at the spacing. The spacing is super tight. That's what this right here is doing. This is that 0.2 distance. So I'm gonna undo that. And we'll zoom out just a little bit there. I'm going to take this percentage and set it to 1, which is going to increase that distance between these UV shells. I'm also going to set rotate to none so that Maya cannot rotate it at all, and we'll just hit apply. We get a very different look when we do that. We get much greater distance in between our shells, which is nice. We won't get any problems with textures bleeding into other shells or any paint bleeding into other shells there. Overall, though, you know, our goal is to get these so that they're human readable. They kind of are. We would consider this to be human readable. We can kind of look through these pieces here and figure out what's what. But what I don't like about it is the rotation, the overall layout. Things are still kind of rotated at awkward angles. I'm going to undo once again, and we'll hit A to frame everything up. And I'll manually select my shells and rotate these myself so that they're a little bit more planar. Rotate that. I think all the legs and toes are pretty good. The wings are a little, a little awkward, so we'll rotate those. And that head, we're just eyeballing it. We're not trying to get too specific here. Okay, I think all of those other pieces look pretty good. They look pretty planar. Let's make sure we're in object mode and we'll choose layout UVs. I'll just hit apply. Now this is important because I just rotated it. We want to definitely make sure that it's set to none. Otherwise Maya will alter everything we just did. Hit apply. Frame that up. There we go. Now we get a nice neat order. Now everything looks much better. A little bit more planar, kind of more on a horizontal and vertical setup. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, we'll keep this. Now let's go ahead and close this, go back to our object, and we'll delete our history. And when we did that mirror cut, we upset the normals, which is where that line is coming from. So I'll just select my model, go to normals, choose soften edge. That also added a history node back, so just to clean this up, we'll delete that history one last time, which now gives us a nice clean model with good UVs.